the day trading secret that nobody told you. That's the topic of today's video, so stick around. All right, I have Thinkorswim brought up and I'm gonna dive right into this. I wanna share with you the number one best way to buy or sell a stock in the markets using Thinkorswim. This is something that a lot of people aren't talking about and it's something that beginners don't typically know anything about and it can save you a ton of money. So let's dive into this. I first wanna just start off by talking about market orders versus limit orders, what they are. Once we have that understanding, we can dive a little deeper into the secret that I'm gonna give you today. So market orders are just saying to the broker, take this order and get whatever price you can for it. You can see the danger in that. If you submit an order and you get a big move in the stock, you might get a fill that's way above or way below where you actually want it to be filled. So it's a way to get in very quickly or a way to get out very quickly. Typically stop losses are market orders. Aside from that, I don't know any other application for a market order that I would use it for. I would only use it for a stop loss. So you can kind of put that in a category by itself. Stop losses, market orders, that's it. No other application, just leave it alone. Just my opinion. Now moving on to limit orders. A limit order says if you're trying to buy a stock, you're telling the broker, I'll buy it, but only at the certain price below. If you're shorting, you're saying, I'll go ahead and sell it, but only at a certain price or higher. So for example, if you wanted to buy a stock at $79 and it's trading at 79.10, and you submit that limit order of $79, nothing will happen unless it gets down to that price. Once it gets to that price, you're saying, I'll accept it, I'll take that fill at that price. That's the difference. So you can see, it's a free for all, get whatever price you want for a market order. For a limit order, it's saying specified price or better. They can't give you a worse price. What can happen though, in the case of a limit order, is that say price action gets close to your price and you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna get my fill, look at me, and then a big volatility wave comes in and boom, it drops. It can actually skip your order and you don't get filled at all and you'll miss the move. This has happened to me countless times when I began trading. When I began day trading, I'd get an order set up, I'd feel really good about it, the pattern would be perfect, and then it would blow right through my order and I'd never get filled. And I'm left wondering, well, what happened? And what happened is you just got skipped. You Maybe someone got filled, maybe one person, two people, 10 people got filled, but if there's a bunch of orders sitting one penny above the high of day and you're trying to play a high of day breakout and orders rush in, not everyone's gonna get filled. So a lot of times you'll get skipped. So I did some research and I figured out a way around this and that leads us to the big secret that I wanna tell you about. The secret I've been withholding that you're interested in is something known as a stop limit order. Sounds similar to a limit order, but it has the word stop in it. And I'm gonna show you how to set it up because it's super effective, and I wanna go ahead and just describe it to you first. So that example I gave you about trying to buy a stock one penny above the high, it got blown through and nobody got executed. It jumped, it skipped them. Well, with a stop limit order, what you can do is you can create a little range. You can say, yes, trigger my order at one penny above the high, but I'm willing to accept slippage or a higher price up to 10 cents above or five cents above, whatever you want it to be. You set what is called the stop and that stop will trigger the order. And then between the stop and wherever you wanna set the limit, that's the range you're willing to accept. So you could get filled anywhere within that range, but not above. Okay, so it's restrictive like a limit order, but there's a less chance of being skipped because now instead of saying only execute me on the penny, you're saying only execute me within this tiny range that I picked. So that might be a little confusing, it might sound kind of crazy, but now that you've heard the description, let's jump into the example and I'll show you exactly what it is. So over here on the side, you can see I'm toggling open and close the active trader window. If you don't have the active trader window, you can open it up here in the settings for the chart 
and put the sidebar in and that'll allow you to open up the Active Trader window. So once you have this open, let's pretend that you're trading AMD and let's just create up a hypothetical scenario. So let's say I only want to get triggered on AMD if it goes above $78, okay? Let's pretend this is a little breakout strategy and I want to take it long over $78. So what I can do here is I can open up this TRG with brackets and that will give me the option to create a stop loss and a target and I can enter in this stop limit order. So I go ahead, I'll enter in here, let's say I want to have my stop loss be 25 cents and I want my take profit to be at 50 cents, okay? And I'm gonna buy 500 shares. So I've got that all figured out, it's all pre-programmed, and now I'm waiting. Oh, and you can see we're above 78, so we might have to do it a little bit higher. So now I'm gonna say, I wanna buy this if it goes above 78.08. So I'm gonna go ahead, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to 78.08 on this ladder. I'm gonna come over to the green side, which is the buy side, and with the auto send turned off, I just go ahead and click it. And it brings this screen up. And what you do is you just click edit. And now, I'm gonna move myself out of the way. Now you have this order entry kind of ticket window right here where you can go in and you can mess with the order. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see here that 25 cent stop loss is here, 50 cent take profits there, okay? So that's just part of my trade that's already set up. Now the key is the entry, which is the green bar. You come over here and you see market. If I enter this order where it is right now, it will execute me at market value wherever that happens to be. That's what I don't want. That's for a stop loss, not for trade entry. So I come to the order type where it says market. I click this and I select stop limit. Now, what this gives me is a stop, which is basically a trigger to make the trade active. So I'm gonna say, I want this to be active at, and we're jumping around here, I'm gonna say 78.20, or maybe 15, let's do 15, let's see if we get triggered. And then I will accept a price between 78.15, and let's say for example, 78.20. So let's go ahead and let's just put in 78.20. So I'm willing to accept an entry anywhere in this area but not outside of that, not above that. And let's see if we get triggered. I'm gonna click confirm and send. I'm gonna send that out. You can double check everything here. All right, the order's out. That triggered me right away. That's a really bad example because it triggered us too quickly. So let's go ahead and flatten that out. And let's just get out of that for a second and let's do it again. All right, so here's our 25 cent. Let's make this 50 cents like we did earlier, 500 shares. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and let's say 78.15 again. Click this here, it's good we're getting a second repetition. I'll click edit, and then you can see right here, we've got our stop loss and our target. And then for market, I'm gonna to go to stop limit, just like we did before. Now from 78.15, I'm gonna say 78.10 now. So between 78.10 and 78.15, I'm willing to accept a fill. So let's go ahead and put that in. All right, so now what you can see is it's all set up right here for you. You've got your stop loss and your target, but they aren't active yet because you haven't been triggered. Your trigger is gonna happen when you hit, you can see right on that bar, 78.10, with the limit of what you're willing to accept at 78.15. So let's see if this gets filled and we'll go from there. If it doesn't, we can edit it, and I'll show you how, let's say, I tell you what, let's do, if you wanna change it, cancel replace. I'm gonna move it down to eight, and we'll do, we'll leave it at 15. So between eight and 15, I'm willing to accept it. Oh, and it keeps dropping. So let's drop it down to five. Five and 10. All right, there we go. So we just got executed. So it got triggered because price hit our stop. And if we go to messages, we can see where the fill was. So we said we'd be happy to be filled between 78.05 and 78.10. And look at that, it filled us at 78.06, okay? 
So we got one penny of slippage, but the beautiful thing is we said we're okay with that slippage. We don't mind if we get that couple pennies because that's acceptable. A little bit of slippage was worth it to us in order to get entered into the trade. Now, what you have out here after having that stop limit order activated, activate us is we have our target and our stop loss. So you could literally walk away from this and be fine. And the reason for that is because the stop is a market order. Any price action below this level will trigger me out of the trade. And this one up here, this is gonna be a limit order to sell. So I will get executed at that penny, at that level. So that is how you set up the stop limit order. Now let's do this. Let's take the same thing, but let's go short. Let's say I wanna get short at 77.98. Click edit. And here is our stop loss, there's our target. Change this to stop limit. Now our stop is 77.98, but remember we're going short. So the limit has to be below our stop. So instead of going up in price, we're gonna go down. So this order here says I'll accept anything between 77.98 down to 77.90 for a fill, okay? And I can actually, let's go up to 78.01 down to 78.90. Let's confirm and send that out. And we'll see if we get filled on that. But that's the same thing as a long order. It's just flipped and it's a short order. You're just going in the other direction. And the one thing that you'll notice on this is the color of this tag is red, indicating that's a short. In the other scenario, if you, re if you rewind the video a little bit, you'll see that this tag here was green. So this is red, these are green, and then the opposite's true in the other example. So if you're going to go long, your limit order has to be higher than your stop. If you're going short, your limit order has to be lower in price than your stop. And that should keep you safe limit your slippage, and ensure that you don't get skipped because you can control the window of opportunity. If you have questions, drop them below. I hope this was helpful. Glad to see you stop by. If you're new, subscribe. If you like the video or you learned something, hit that thumbs up, I'd love it. And if you didn't know anything about stop limit orders but you learned something today, drop down in the comments and tell me about it. If you know about stop limit orders and you feel like you have additional information to add or you feel like I forgot something, Throw that in the comments as well. I'd love to see it. All right, see you next time.